the showdown between Chinese tech giants Huawei and Xiaomi has long surpassed just product competition. On December 9th, during its annual Fans Festival, Huawei's executive director, Richard Yu, indirectly implied that Xiaomi had copied Huawei's foldable screen technology. But this incident is just the tip of the iceberg. In reality, it represents the intense competition between the two companies in smartphones and smart automobiles industries. In the smartphone industry, Xiaomi's 14 series has achieved monthly sales exceeding 4 million units, surpassing Huawei's Mate 60 series by a factor of three. Notably, the Redmi K70 model sold an impressive 600,000 units within the first five minutes of its initial release. It showcased the market vitality of Xiaomi products and the trust consumers have in the brand. Currently, Xiaomi holds the second position in the Chinese smartphone market, priced at 4,000 yuan and above. The Redmi K70 is priced at just over 2,000 yuan and equipped with the latest 5G flagship processor from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, released in August. In contrast, Huawei's Mate 60 series sell for 7,000 yuan with a chip from three years ago. Such a significant price performance gap makes it challenging for Huawei to compete with Xiaomi in the market. Consumer doubts about Huawei's Mate 60 are steadily increasing. With such a high price and relatively poor specifications, people are questioning whether Huawei is truly competitive and whether it holds a significant lead in the market. Faced with such market feedback, if Huawei has the capability, it could lower smartphone prices a lot and increase supply to meet market demands to outcompete Xiaomi. It could also utilize online influencers or public relations strategies to create buzz without Richard Yu himself speaking. However, Richard Yu has chosen to engage in a war of words. At Huawei's Fans Festival on December 9th, Richard Yu implied that Xiaomi had copied Huawei's dual rotating water drop hinge patent, merely renaming it as the Dragon Backbone Hinge. Three days later, Xiaomi responded straightforward assertively, we kindly request Mr. Richard Yu to adhere to the fundamental principles of science and rigor and refrain from smearing peers or misleading the public. From a technical perspective, Xiaomi and Huawei's hinge designs are entirely different. Xiaomi's Dragon Backbone hinge employs a three-level rod assembly design, whereas Huawei's hinge is structured as a two-level system. There are significant differences in the flexibility of screen angles between the two. Consumer experiences indicate that Xiaomi's screen can maintain stability at any angle, while Huawei's design is limited to fully open and closed positions. Huawei's dual rotating water drop hinge has, from the moment it was made public, been seen as using outdated technology. Being accused of plagiarizing a 70-point assignment when you've actually submitted a 100.1 is certainly an unusual situation. Xiaomi's willingness to openly counter and even challenge Huawei's Richard Yu is indeed a rare occurrence in the industry. It's remarkable, and it has garnered significant attention. The news even topped the trending topics on the evening of December 12th, with a staggering 250 million reads on the subject. However, what's even more noteworthy is Huawei's attempt to mitigate the impact of the incident through public opinion control. The following noon, the relevant topic mysteriously disappeared from the trending search topics list. This approach inevitably reminds one of Huawei's past use of similar tactics. For example, during the incident where an employee was detained for 251 days, Huawei implemented similar control measures. This also proves that Xiaomi has indeed posed a significant challenge to Huawei in both domestic and international markets. It appears that Huawei, feeling the pressure, resorted to having its top executives personally engage in tactics that include smearing their competitors. With an already dwindling public image, these actions have led more people to see the true nature of the company. Thanks to the sanctions imposed by the US, the smartphone industry has had a relatively calm environment in recent years. Various manufacturers have focused on enhancing hardware specifications, allowing technological progress to benefit more people. But Huawei's return with its characteristic assertiveness has disrupted this tranquility. It has introduced various unsavory tactics and aggressive marketing for high-priced flagship phones with lower specifications. These tactics haven't performed as well as Xiaomi's Series 14 phones and highlights the competitive landscape in the industry. Actions speak louder than words. Huawei's smartphone business was severely affected by U.S. sanctions in 2019. It prompted the company to explore opportunities in the smart automobile market as a transition. Huawei proposed selling its solutions to all automakers, but it faced reluctance from leading domestic automakers to collaborate with the company. The concerns of car manufacturers mainly center around several aspects. Firstly, they are worried about potential future competition from Huawei. Secondly, they are concerned that Huawei may cut off the supply at critical moments. 
Thirdly, they are apprehensive that cooperation might place them in an unfavorable position in the market. In 2021, when asked whether Sayak Motor Group would consider cooperating with Huawei in autonomous driving, Sayak publicly stated that they would not collaborate with Huawei and intended to keep control of their technology in their own hands. Huawei has earned a nickname in the industry, often referred to as a jack of all trades. It means that whenever it enters an industry, it poses a significant competitive threat and competitors should prepare for intense competition. Additionally, Huawei's marketing and public relations management are known to be of a high caliber, employing strategies akin to those seen in political elections, inheriting some characteristics from the Chinese Communist Party's approach. However, some lesser known manufacturers are still willing to cooperate with Huawei. For instance, Chongqing's Dongfeng Xiaokang Automobile, which has since transformed into Ceres Group, has partnered with Huawei to design complete cars, establish a brand, and develop an entire marketing strategy. The resulting car is named Aito, with a significant portion of the earnings going to Huawei. Last year, the sales volume for the Aito brand reached only 75,000 vehicles, averaging just over 6,000 units per month. But in the first eight months of this year, the situation has become even more challenging, with only 35,000 units in total sales and monthly average sales dropping to over 4,000 units. Surprisingly, in September, the Kirin 9000S chip featured in the Huawei Mate 60 series managed to breathe new life into the Ido brand. In September, Ido M7 cars received an astonishing 50,000 orders, which further increased to 100,000 cars by the end of November. What's the reason behind this? Firstly, the Kirin 9000S chip featured in the Huawei Mate 60 series was promoted as a breakthrough amidst US sanctions. It triggered patriotic sentiments among consumers. Many chose to purchase the Ido M7 as a show of support. Additionally, the M7 offered more features without an increase in price, with the seven-seat vehicle's pricing ranging from 250,000 to 320,000 yuan, similar to that of the M5. Based on observations, the primary buyers of the Ido M7 are government officials who are typically existing users of Huawei smartphones. Some consumers, in order to get their hands on the Mate 60 smartphone earlier, opted to purchase the Ido M7. For those who were previously buying BMW and Audi vehicles, the Ido M7 is a more affordable option while allowing them to showcase their patriotism, making it an attractive choice. But the Ido M7 performed poorly in winter testing. Unexpected accidents in the upcoming Ido M9 with intelligent driving features have also raised concerns. The Ido M7 plug-in hybrid model was built with an investment of 500 million yuan, but it ranked at the bottom in terms of battery range during the annual winter testing conducted by DCT, a well-known automotive publication, in early December. Richard Yu, frustrated, criticized the testing and said, misleading tests, science and rigor are the fundamental rules that should be followed. Subsequently, Huawei fans launched various attacks online, accusing DCT of being non-standard, non-compliant, and not conducting live broadcasts. They demanded an apology from DCT. In the past, if any media outlet reported negative news about Huawei products, Huawei has often exerted pressure, sometimes leading to media retractions or apologies. In 2019, after the release of the Huawei P30 Pro, Wang Yuekun of iFu Technology discovered that the moon mode photos were actually synthesized. As a result, he faced strong backlash from Huawei fans. iFu Technology eventually issued an apology under pressure and fired Wang Yuekun. In January 2022, an Oppo employee, Chen Xiaoming, pointed out that Harmony OS was deeply customized based on Android 10, but was subsequently dismissed by Oppo. These events reflect Huawei's strong control over public opinion. However, it's worth noting that DCT's major shareholder is ByteDance, a company with significant influence in the Chinese internet sector, and it appears to be unswayed by pressure from Huawei. On December 14th, DCT conducted another public test, with the entire process live-streamed. The Ido M7's pure electric range and performance in the Moose test both ranked at the bottom. In the pure electric range test, the Ido M7 achieved a range of only 10.6 kilometers, significantly below the claimed 175 kilometers. In the Moose test, the Ido M7 also failed to pass. These test results have raised questions among internet users about whether the claimed 100,000 orders for the Ido M7 are genuine. Ultimately, the number of vehicles registered on the road will provide a clearer picture. The discrepancies between the Ado M7 and its marketing claims have left many feeling misled, contrary to the notion of it being far ahead in the market. In late December, the Ido M9 underwent its first real-world test on the streets, 
but it unexpectedly encountered a bus with a Sichuan license plate. Ceres Automotive soon released a statement blaming driver intervention for causing the autonomous driving system to disengage. This explanation has raised widespread doubts among internet users, as the M9 is supposed to be equipped with an advanced automatic emergency braking system, which should have prevented such incidents. However, internet users have raised questions about this, as the IDO M9 is supposed to have an AEB system. AEB is a safety system that automatically applies the brakes in scenarios where a collision is likely to occur. It's considered a fundamental feature of active safety systems, designed to activate the brakes when a collision is imminent. In Europe, many car brands equip their vehicles with AEB systems, but in practice these systems are often disabled due to safety concerns. This is because AEB can potentially lead to sudden braking in cases of misjudgment, posing unexpected risks to the driver and following vehicles. Car manufacturers have now implemented speed limits for AEB activation. Typically, it's only activated at speeds below 60 kilometers. In some situations, it may provide warnings rather than applying the brakes directly. From the photos shared by internet users at the accident scene, it's obvious that the front hood of the IDO M9 suffered bending and deformation. The headlights were cracked due to the collision with the bus. In media rumors, it's said that the vehicle involved in this accident was a test car used for a media dynamic evaluation event of the IDO M9 in Chengdu. The vehicle speed on city streets is not typically very high. Such an environment should be an ideal scenario for the AEB system to come into play but it appears that the system did not effectively intervene in this case. Xiaoping Motors chairman, Mr. Ho Xiaoping, mentioned that his staff inquired with individuals from IDO while shooting a video. They found out that IDO's AEB system cannot be enabled because there are too many cases of mistaken braking on the road. This incident has further raised public doubts about the effectiveness of Huawei's autonomous driving system 2.0 and AEB technology. In this incident, Huawei and Richard Yu did not directly respond but had Ceres Automotive provide an explanation. Some internet users said that, when everything is going well, it's touted as Huawei's technology being far ahead. But when issues arise, it's Ceres that steps in to handle the situation, leading to perceptions of passing the blame. Richard Yu had previously highly promoted the safety technology of Huawei vehicles. He claims comprehensive active collision prevention, making it difficult to have collisions, even if one tried. He spoke of not only preventing collisions, but also preventing others from colliding with the vehicle, and how reversing would be difficult to collide. Some people put their trust in Richard Yu's words, only to find themselves in a potentially dangerous situation. On December 7th, at an Edo dealership, a salesperson, while conducting a test drive with customers, intentionally did not apply the brakes to demonstrate the automatic braking function. He believed that the vehicle would stop automatically. But, the expected outcome did not occur, resulting in an accident that left a family of four injured. Eto responded by acknowledging the need for human intervention and stated that the dealership had already paid compensation of 280,000 yuan. Another incident involved the Huawei Aito M5 unexpectedly accelerating while in reverse. It resulted in a rapid collision with the rear of a BYD electric car known as the Dolphin. The Aito M5's rear wheels ended up on top of the BYD's roof. Huawei responded by stating that when reversing in the presence of a stationary vehicle, the AEB system is not triggered. This contradicts Richard Yu's earlier promotional statements. Huawei also mentioned that in such situations, if the driver applies the accelerator, it can lead to accidents. According to insiders, pre-orders for the new IDO M9 have reached nearly 40,000 units. Meanwhile, Ceres factory in Chongqing is working hard to increase production capacity. It has already implemented a two-shift production schedule per day, but there have been reports that many workers at Ceres factory leave after working for just a single day. The reason for this is due to the extremely poor working conditions, which demand a significant amount of physical effort coupled with inadequate labor protections. Some workers have reported shaky hands during meal breaks, with such working conditions and labor intensity. It is believed that the cars produced there will be far ahead in terms of quality, leaving little to question about who would dare to drive them. Looking ahead, the key factor will be the quality control of Edo vehicles. If the reputation remains positive and the brand gains recognition, Edo may indeed establish itself and gradually grow. This possibility is not out of the question. It is a risk given the reported conditions of new workers being trained for just one day and then working long hours. If quality control were to deteriorate significantly, it could negatively impact the car's reliability and performance.
Even if quality control were to deteriorate, it might not immediately impact sales, especially considering Huawei's strong control over public opinion. Huawei's public relations capabilities are quite impressive. They have the potential to manage the narrative effectively. Aido might continue to survive for some time under these circumstances, but it may not last long. The reason is that the significant upfront investment made in ramping up production capacity could go to waste if production lines are halted later. The most significant risk factor is the current economic downturn. Regardless of whether the vehicles are of high quality or not, if economic conditions are unfavorable, there may be a lack of demand. This is the most significant possibility to consider. Therefore, Huawei's hopes of turning things around through car manufacturing may not be achievable, especially if economic factors are not in their favor. In 2019, after facing challenges such as Google's ban, Android restrictions, and chip supply disruptions, Huawei introduced its self-developed mobile operating system called Harmony OS. But Harmony OS did not receive support from other major smartphone manufacturers. Even Huawei's subsidiary, Honor Technologies, did not adopt Harmony OS. This situation continued through 2023. Before the sanctions, Huawei was indeed a massive company with annual revenue close to 900 billion yuan. But in 2022, Huawei's revenue decreased to just over 600 billion yuan, which includes a lot of money from the sale of the Honor smartphone brand. Despite the challenges, Huawei significantly increased its R&D investment to 160 billion yuan. Cash reserves also decreased by one-third, indicating a change in the company's financial condition compared to its previous state. Given this situation, making a significant capital investment in the automotive sector, which inherently involves heavy assets and substantial expenses, comes with significant risks. If unexpected challenges arise and the investment does not yield corresponding returns, it could strain the company's financial resources and potentially lead to severe consequences for Huawei. As a result, Huawei's board of directors voted on and proposed a strategic decision to not make cars. Huawei currently faces a challenging situation with multiple areas of significant capital expenditure, leading to a decrease in cash reserves. If IDO vehicles do not perform well in the market, there is indeed a substantial risk involved. To manage this risk, Huawei's car business unit with 7,000 employees recently split off 5,000 employees from its intelligent driving product line. These employees have transitioned to a new company funded by Chang'an Automobile. Meanwhile, Richard Yu remains at Huawei to focus on Harmony OS Intelligent Travel, Huawei's intelligent transportation initiative, with a specific focus on Ito vehicles. If the sanctions are successfully endured and conditions improve, Huawei may retain only dividend shares in Ito, rename it as Huawei Ito. It can officially enter the car manufacturing industry, establish its own factories, and strive to become the apple of the intelligent automobile industry. If the sanctions become too difficult to handle, Huawei might discontinue IDO and focus on being a supplier without engaging in peripheral activities. Otherwise, car manufacturers might be wary and hesitant to adopt Huawei's solutions. If the situation becomes untenable, Huawei could consider selling its car business unit, contracting its operations, and exiting the automotive industry to redirect resources to its core business for financial recovery. For Richard Yu, the sales volume of IDO vehicles is crucial. This is one of the reasons why he engaged in a dispute with Xiaomi. With Xiaomi's automotive venture launching in December, it's likely that they will also face head-to-head -head competition in the future. It remains to be seen who will come out on top next year in terms of market impact and sales.